Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Jack Whitehall. <laughs> we start with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of the three main party leaders, but what does TLDP stand for? Is it Tinky Winky Lala? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Is it just left or right? Does it just go Tory, Liberal Democrat, Pillock? <laughs> it's close. Or is it's... it Tory, Labour, Dunno, Pass? <laughs> <laughs> is it Tatty, Bojangle, Lovers, Discuss Preferences? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it looks like the dullest fruit machine ever. <laughs> <laughs> the... I think it just, you, you can't see them in the photograph, but it's tiny ladies delight politicians. <laughs> What it is, it's Tories love dinosaur porn. I have this on flash. Right? <laughs> William Hague regularly, the only way he can have sex if he's dressed as a T-Rex. <laughs> to be honest, I've does seen he, that does he, pin his, does he pin his little arms in and everything? <laughs> <He> tries... <laughs> nice! <laughs> is it televised leaders debate proposed? Very good. Yeah. Frankie gets the answer. Oh. Not very good. Yes, the answer I was looking for was televised leaders' debate proposed. This is a story that Sky News has invited the three major parties to take part in a primetime studio debate in the run-up to the next general election. It would be the first of its kind to take place in the UK. So would you watch it? How can Gordon Brown possibly go on television <laughs> and hope that it's going to go well? <laughs> with, with his smile, that very smile, what did he say to his media advisor? I want to look like I've just been punched up the arse. <laughs> He can't stand beside David Cameron because he'll look like he's melting. <laughs> the only logical debate between the two sides, we have a debate between Margaret Thatcher and Peter Mandelson, because it'll be like Alien versus Predator. <laughs> no questions. The, one, the winner is the one who manages to devour the other's head. <laughs> they reckon that they will try and persuade them on there because they're going to say that they'll empty chair anybody who doesn't show up. Now, when Roy Hattersley didn't show up once, they booked him, didn't they? A tub of lard. The empty chair thing is intriguing, though. Like, I mean, because they, they said... Sky News have basically said, we've booked it, it's happening, and you can turn it's up not. or not turn up. So the empty chair thing is a possibility, cos because Brown said he's not going to go. So there is every chance that, like, under the law, they have to give the chair equal amount of time to the other two. <laughs> and I think the chair could win in that situation. <laughs> Very chair. absolutely, because people <laughs> watch it and go, I'm sick of hearing these people argue, but I'm enjoying the chair. Right? So, <laughs> is this going to be on Sky? Sky, Sky News. Sky News the, this... the future of your nation brought to you by Domino's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and every answer come, would come in a whoosh noise. Uh, <laughs> and Andy Gray will run backwards over, well, you see what he did there. Uh, and then goes, <laughs> every time they lie, we should have a child just come on and kick him in the nads. Wouldn't that be fantastic? <laughs> just a little innocent kid. Wallop. Recession 2010. Ah! It's actually, better than that, if you would, every time they had a lie, a child would come out and just cry a single tear. <laughs> just slow. How could you? There is a. Uh, it's one it's of the not objections. Going what, to happen. It's not going to happen. Of course, it's not going to happen. Because Gordon Brown said he's not going to do it. Yeah. yeah. And you can't. Sky News have this weird field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they going, we're going to do the show anyway, and we'll do it without. You can't just make the Prime Minister do a TV show on a poxy cable news channel. You can't just go, oh, I'm sorry, I don't think I can make it that day. I'm running the country! <laughs> Badly, I'll admit, but nevertheless. It's been so predictable as well, that's the because whenever Gordon Brown goes on, the policies are always... It's always, to get out of the economy, we need to spend, spend, spend. And, like, the only time I ever want to turn on my TV and have someone with one eye pleading with me to part with my cash is Pudsey, the children in need best. <laughs> It's also not going to happen on Sky. I tell you, it's absolutely not going to happen at all, because Sky relies on advertising, and who's going to advertise in the middle of a debate between the world's dullest politicians? Every break, there's just going to be one long ad for the Dignitas Clinic. That'll be... <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
They're talking about having this hand-picked audience, and you're thinking, no, that will be dull. Get in a few rowdies, you know, and then each time Nick Clegg stands up, you're going to have a whole bunch of people going, who are you? <laughs> who are you? <laughs> who are you? <laughs> Nick Clegg could get an actor to stand in for him, couldn't he? Because nobody really knows who he is. <laughs> people the next day would be going, oh, Nick Clegg was very relaxed, wasn't he? <laughs> very authoritative, yes, and surprisingly like Jeff Bridges. <laughs> Nick Clegg, Nick Clegg could get one of the animatronics from Walt Disney. He could get, like, the bear that plays the guitar to come out and go, Nick Clegg, I didn't understand much of his policies, but he played the banjo exceptionally well. <laughs> it's got to be a better idea than PMQs. Do you ever watch that? I mean, oh, it's fantastic. I love PMQs. Oh, no, it's not. Every time somebody agrees, have you ever made a point of someone going, good point, and have your mates go, rah, rah. <laughs> The noise they make, it sounds like somebody's put Boris Johnson in a blender. That is... <laughs> It's so good because they're so childish during the yeah, but that's what It's so fun. Down, that's why yeah. I want to see in the debate them to be like, right, let's get proceedings underway. Yeah, that's what your dad said last night when he was bombing your brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Do you know they're talking about presenting this? David Frost, David Frost is yeah. the front runner. How's David Frost going to present? Are they going to pull his head out of the freezer it sits in beside Walt Disney's? <laughs> Frost it in the microwave. The last time David Frost interviewed three men, they were following a star. <laughs> oh, listen, as a sequel, Frost Clegg yeah. doesn't yeah. quite have that Oscar ring to it. Yeah. Yeah. He's also quite likely to go, number 10, who wants to live in a house like this? <laughs> I think the other thing is with David Cameron, yes. I think, and it's because he's posh and we all know that, but I think he should go on the defensive a little bit more. Because I realise that I'm quite posh and I've always taken the view, you know, if people give me shit for it, sticks and stones may break my bones, but screw it, I'm with Booper. <laughs> yeah. kind, kind of... Things around us, you know. My fundamental objection to the idea of a debate between the leaders is that it is an American idea. I can't bear the idea that it's American idea. It's like one of those ideas that we've imported. Like, nobody has a school leavers disco anymore. They all have a high school prom. And they all turn up in little bow ties and How a ball do you gown. Because he's cruising around <laughs> in an empty limo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like the hip hop? No, 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 Ladies. <laughs> So half baked. If they want that to be properly American, they want to get one of the nerdy kids to come in with a rifle and shoot everything. <laughs> <laughs> in other news, which party leader is also likely to appear on TV? Nick Griffin is going to be on Question Time, laying it down. BN, BNP, BNP yeah. Nick Griffin, yes. yes. Nick, Nick Griffin appearing on Question Time. What nobody's told Nick Griffin is that this particular episode is being hosted by the Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> <laughs> Brixton Academy. <laughs> hey, Method Man here. I believe our first question is from Mike Tyson. <laughs> Every single photo you see of him in the paper, he always looks like his wife's having sex with Ainsley Harriet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We can't trust people every week in this show, and so welcome to the game, Nick. You look like fat Hitler. Yeah. There's no... There's no two ways around. He looks like a I jowly Adolf. Like, he looks like a plucked owl that's been fast-tracked for management at Greg's. <laughs> <laughs> Says. Everyone's defending the notion of putting the BNP on question time because everyone says, hey, well, when they go on, they'll just sound like idiots and it'll show themselves, show themselves up for the idiots that they are. Like, if someone's an idiot, no one's going to vote for them. The mayor of London is Boris Johnson, <laughs> right? <laughs> the Equality Commission or whatever have now said that they can't have only white members. They're not allowed to do that they're going to have to start accepting black and Asian members in the BNP. <laughs> Which would be fantastic. So, Trevor MacDonald, News at 10. I have become president of the BNP. <laughs> <laughs> that would just sort the whole That's thing out. That's what they need, though. Yeah. If they had some black people in there, maybe they'd get to go to some proper parties, get laid and chill the fuck out. <laughs> I but punish them as well with the BMP. It's like the guy that threw an egg at Nick Griffin. Don't throw an egg, throw a samosa. <laughs> there is a fear, obviously, that if you, you will legitimise uh, a political leader by bringing him onto this thing. But, it, you know, it's question time. It's not like the BBC are simply opening the doors to Nick Griffin. He's not appearing on Saturday Kitchen, uh, which I think... <laughs> or he's the new doctor. That'd be particularly weird if, oh, my God, the new doctor. It's Nick Griffin. Uh, and Nick Griffin points to his black assistant and goes, well, you're out for a start. Uh, <laughs> This TARDIS is full. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> the most interesting thing about Nick Griffin, I think, have you, do you know this fact about him? He went to an all-girls school. He was, he was one of only two boys at an all-girls school, right? And I'm just going to play amateur psychologist here, <laughs> right? I reckon the other boy at that school was incredibly good-looking, good with the ladies, and black. <laughs> The end of that round is the points go to Frankie Hugh and Jack. <laughs> now we play a round called Thief of Gagdad. <laughs> this game <laughs> involves Ed, Jack, Andy, and Russell. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performer stand up skills. We spin our news generator, it settles on a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winners are the people I judge to produce the funniest stuff. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. First subject is sleep. Ebert. <clears throat> um, does anyone here sleep with someone who snores? Yes. 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 Well, I envy you, because I lie awake next to someone who snores. <laughs> <laughs> My wife snores terribly, and, and, and part of what keeps me awake is lying there going, how do you sleep through this? <laughs> I can't sleep through it. I'm only next to it. The noise is inside your head. <laughs> And how come you can sleep through that? But the sound of me making a sandwich in our kitchen, that wakes you up. There is no way me making a sandwich makes more noise than you're making right now. She snores. So she said the cutest thing to me one time, though. She says, do I not sound like a kitten purring? Bless. No. You sound like a cat drowning in porridge. <laughs> if I had a kitten made that noise, I'd put it down. Apparently, she had her nose broken a couple of times when she was a kid. Didn't teach her, she's still bleeding snores. Thank you very much, Ed. OK, let's spin the wheel again. Subject is health. Andy Parsons. <laughs> With flu jabs now, what they do, don't they, is they put a little bit of flu into you to help you combat the flu. I was thinking by that argument, surely you should be able to have the odd cake to help you fight obesity. Because <laughs> let's face it, you can do too much exercise, can't you? You know, did you see Madonna's arms? They didn't look right, did they? <laughs> it's a like half human, half terminator. <laughs> of course, that's a problem when you're always picking up small African children <laughs> going. Mmm. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Thank you very much, Andy. <laughs> OK, the leads are with Russell and Jack. Let's spin the wheel. The next subject is television. Who wants to come into that? Jack. Um, I get very frustrated with pretty much everything on television. I find adverts at the moment particularly annoying, like the banking adverts, because they're trying to portray bankers as being nice people. Like, they've got this one at the moment for, like, a mobile bank that travels around the country and you walk in and there's your friendly local bank manager acting like a hairdresser, like, nattering away. You know, you walk up to the till, it's like, oh, how was your holiday? I went camping. Oh, why did you go camping? Because you lost all of my money! <laughs> The only option I've got is just to not watch TV at all, because everything annoys me. And I've got quite a lot of people that pressure me into doing that as well. Like my dad, he's quite old-fashioned. He's always saying, you don't need to watch television. You should do other things, better things, more edifying things. Don't watch TV, Jack. You should read. Read the great novels. They're entertaining. They're educational. Even read the Bible. The Bible is engrossing. It's enthralling. The stories of Jesus, they're encapsulating. They're invigorating. I'm like, no, Dad. If I wanted to be entertained, by 12 people sat round a table trying to impress some bearded Jewish know-it-all that thinks he's some kind of deity, I will watch The Apprentice. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jack Whitehall. <laughs> OK, Russell, let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. That's fitness. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been camel toes. Now... <laughs> I was in the gym the other day. I was in a, a locker room, and a five-year-old boy ran in and jumped into a locker. Now, sometimes, you know you're just going to have an incident, right? You could hear him in there giggling. Like, <laughs> and you knew what he was going to do. He was going to jump out and scare his mates, cos his mates appeared seconds later, like, where's Stephen gone? <laughs> where's Stephen? He was there a minute ago. <laughs> this is most irregular. Huh? 
and he waited, not for his mates, but for three huge naked men. It was fantastic. <laughs> they were kind of walking past, and this little kid leapt at those men like a cat with rabies. It was incredible, right? <laughs> Just from nowhere, the noise they made, I've never heard a noise like it. They sounded like a tugboat getting molested. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. His long-suffering dad is in the showers, obviously heard this and went, that'll be my bloody boy! <laughs> Ran back, confronted this glowing hell beast and went, Stephen! What have I told you about acting up in public? And this little kid cut his dad down with one very simple sentence. Dad, your willies moving? <laughs> <laughs> You're just there going, oh, the world is a better place. Thank you very much, Russell. At the end of that round, the points go to Ed and Jack. Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is a question? On the board are six categories. Jack, which category would you like? Travel, please. OK, your category is travel. The answer is one in 500. What is the question? Uh, is it after how many miles would the proclaimers realise they'd made a massive mistake? <laughs> <laughs> is it how many of my sexual fantasies involve my partner? <laughs> Yeah. To be honest, in that one, she's introduced me to her sister. <laughs> <laughs> Is it how many traffic wardens will make it to the kingdom of heaven? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, uh, how many of Jeremy Clarkson's thoughts are about something other than himself? <laughs> and and it, that one is about a car. <laughs> Is it if we're all after a partner who's one in a million, what will most of us settle for? <laughs> Is it what proportion of complaints to the BBC are about Adrian Childs' face being broadcast before the watershed? <laughs> How many documentaries on the History Channel aren't about pharaohs or the Nazis? <laughs> How many Star Trek fans have touched a real woman? <laughs> You say that in such a camp way. <laughs> Is it how many Daily Mail readers have first hand experience of what they're outraged by? <laughs> what is the Hang last on. response you want to the question, What are my chances, Doctor? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it the number of London Midland trains that were running last Sunday? You're absolutely right, Andy yeah. Parker. Thank you very much. Yes, the question I was looking for was how many of London Midland's Sunday train services running as, as normal last weekend? Thousands of people were forced to cancel travel plans or put up a replacement buses after London Midland cancelled all but one of its 500 services. On the plus side, it was the first time this year that London Midland only had one train that was actually running late. <laughs> Also, you've got to feel slightly mm. sorry for a train spotter that day who didn't check on the internet. That's going to be a big one, anyway. Yeah, train spotters, people who told themselves in front of trains, and villains who tie women to trains with piano players going, da da dung, da da dung, ding 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 ding. Keep it going, keep it going. There'll be one along in an hour or so. Da da dung, da da dung. I'm bored with him. Ding 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 ding. You've hit upon a lovely point. Maybe there was somebody who was going to commit suicide. He went, I'm going to throw myself in front of a train. They went there, no trains. I thought, it's a sign. I'm going to live my life to the max. And he went outside and got hit by a replacement bus. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that always gets me. Oh, oh, what do you mean somebody was going to throw themselves under a train? This is Birmingham. Everybody <laughs> was going to throw themselves <laughs> under a train. I went to throw myself off a bridge, <laughs> but there was a queue. <laughs> Are there 500 trains going to Birmingham no, on a it's Sunday? Not. All over the Midlands. They wasn't. I mean, that would be like. I'm sorry, you've missed that train, but there's another one along in 8.6 seconds. Uh, <laughs> Why would anybody be going to Birmingham on a Sunday? Who's going? Grief counsellors. <laughs> imagine though, being imagine being on the one train on the Sunday that is going from Birmingham to Liverpool. It'll be like the last chopper out of Saigon, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> It, they made it voluntary for people to work on a Sunday. And they used to offer the double time, and then they didn't. And so people didn't, no longer volunteered to work on a Sunday. It's not like phoning in sick. It's like phoning in sensible. It's what they did. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you're going to offer us double time anymore? No. Oh, can't make it. Sorry. I, got a, I, I, caught, I came down with a dose of self-respect on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> They've got no trains running, but they do have replacement buses. Oh, and you know, we'll just get them to drive the train. Because surely a bus is a bit harder. You've got to steer. The train is just forward, stop. 
Forward, stop. <laughs> it can't be. Have you ever seen a more depressed sight than when you see a train driver come into a tube station? They're not happy people, are they? Just seem like that. Uh, <laughs> light. Uh, <laughs> it's the don't, don't make the darkness appear again. <laughs> no! Oh, it Would you think you could? Because it is. I mean, I'm sure there's a technical element to driving a train, but it does feel like forward, back, forward, back, stop, right? They could have just gone, well, you're all here. Surely <laughs> one of you would like a go at driving a train. <laughs> I always fancy that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the yeah. buses, man, if you want to know how important trains are in our society, stand outside London Victoria Coach Station and watch the coach that's pulling out with two Inverness written on it. <laughs> the faces of the people in that coach, they look like the faces of dogs in a vet. <laughs> people who are on a 17-hour bus journey, and when they get off, it's going to be 1973. <laughs> So not incompetent. They're not incompetent on trains. They're absolutely not incompetent on trains. It's incredibly imaginative because they come up with... If a train is delayed, they come up with the most fantastic reasons for it. And the one I loved... I was on a train once that went stuck outside Peterborough and the thing went on it went, we apologise for the wait outside Peterborough. This was due to a delay. <laughs> There's always some poor fat bloke in a fluorescent top going, here's a replacement bus service. <laughs> He's... They always get in, you know, it's never kind of the dynamic train drivers down and nah, 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 you know, all sexy and like that. It's just that fat man. So Sunday, come on. All right then. <laughs> Do you not get annoyed by the noise? It drives me mental. You know the bit where the, the buffet guy comes on and just sort of like lists the stuff that's in the buffet? He's not even memorised. Sort of, there's like chocolate bars and <laughs> cups of tea and like salmon. There's only like six things. Just memorise it. Mm. Or just don't tell us at all because it's the sort of stuff you'd expect to find well, in you, a buffet well, well, you need to be told anyway. You, when you walk into a shop, they don't go, hello, welcome to the shop. In the shop, we have magazines <laughs> over there, some streets over here. We have cigarettes behind me here. Like well, no, no, what's in a buffet will be surprised if you've got a partridge down there. <laughs> is when there's someone who's too eager. There's some sandwiches in here just crying out to be eaten. <laughs> Over. I saw a guy the other day, he was drunk on the train, he went into the loo and he got stuck in it and he couldn't open it and he was getting really panicked and uh, the, the train conductor came around to try and get him out it. and he couldn't put it and I was just sat there and this is really bad because he was clearly getting quite distressed and they said, look, what we're going to have to do is wait till we get to the next stop and then we'll get someone to get you out of the loo when we get in there and there was this pause and then I just heard his voice from inside just say, <laughs> Tell my family I love them. <laughs> my my, fa my favourite irony of the, of the thing was that uh, one of the stations that, they, that there were no trains leaving from had a Yo Sushi in it. That must have really felt how you're sitting yeah. there watching the plates go past on a tiny <laughs> train. Well, that small bit of rice and fish is going to reach its destination a lot faster than I will. <laughs> My favourite announcement, once I heard this guy going, we're going to have to go very slowly through Swindon because there are some ragamuffins on the line. <laughs> and then it was so lovely because we sort of went past and there was about 15 kids swearing at the train. <laughs> like that, and the train announcer went, look at those arseholes. <laughs> so we were kind of cheering and that. And then about a minute later, this woman looked very angry. She's on her phone like that. She's kind of going, all right, Matthew, it's your mother here. Revising, are you? Yeah? <laughs> I've just seen you swear at your train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I had another fantastic announcement, which was outside Gloucester or somewhere, coming into Gloucester, and he went, uh, we apologise for the delay outside Gloucester. This is due to chronic underinvestment in the rail industry. <laughs> 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 OK, at the end of that round, the points go to Russell Ed and Andy! <laughs> Now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way to the performance area, please. I caught ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here we go. The first subject is bad things to hear from a tour guide. Please don't take photos of the natives, because they believe that you're taking part of their soul. Apart from that, enjoy Norwich. <laughs> Hello, my name's Janet. I'm your holiday rep. And basically, I'll be giving out morning after pills like they were smarties. <laughs> Good morning. I'm afraid this is the loudest. <laughs> <laughs> Venice is a most historical city, famous for its. Oh shit, it's flooded. Everyone get back on the bus. <laughs> Hello, 
of you will be wondering why there are so many wonderful foreign treasures <laughs> on display here at the British Museum. And the answer is quite simple, really. Gun beat spear. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, this castle does cater for the disabled. They bring you a sandwich while the rest of us go up the steps to look at it. <laughs> Let's have a little song, shall we? da na 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 Coming up later on, we've got the topless donkey derby and who's got the funniest willy competition? Yes, it's going to be the best saga holiday you've ever had. <laughs> I know that a lot of you can't bear to leave Thailand, which is why I've hidden drugs randomly in your luggage. <laughs> <laughs> and as we enter the next room, we, I need you all to be very quiet because we have technically broken in. If you need anything, anything at all, <clears throat> I'll be under your bed. <laughs> <laughs> and if you look out of the window on your left, you'll see the side of the road that we should be driving on. <laughs> of course, you have to respect local customs. On the right-hand side, you'll see a woman being bumped at the stake. <laughs> and on the left, Dundee Town Hall. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is the deepest, darkest bit of the caves. And unless you give me £20 each, it's where you're staying. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, according to Wikipedia, uh, the East Wing was built in the year Dougie is a homo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're now leaving the green zone. Pop on your flat jackets. This is the real Baghdad. <laughs> An adult and two children is ten pounds. But enough about my trip to Cambodia. <laughs> Our next topic is unlikely things to hear on a breakfast show. If the woman I picked up last night is watching, help yourself to cereal, but get out of the flat by the time I get home. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and now it's time for thought for the day. Hmm. That was a good one. <clears throat> You're listening to six music. Yes, you. Just you. <laughs> Welcome to Travel Report. We've got a text here from Dave on the M5 who says, Ha, 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 every morning you leave for work, I pop round and shag your wife. <laughs> So, uh, so if you're trying to get in via Junction 2, stop it. It's against nature, and the Bible says no. <laughs> Next, we speak to Fern Breton about having her stomach stapled, this time to an enormous chocolate cake. <laughs> Uh, in other traffic news, if you're on the M11 headed towards Middlesbrough, I would turn around because it's a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! I'm doing a survey into the effects of replacing milk on your Weetabix with Red Bull! <laughs> <laughs> and we can see there's been an accident northbound on the M1, and it is a beauty! <laughs> Welcome to Radio Tourette's, you shit monkeys. <laughs> you may think of it as a breakfast show. I had mine at four bloody thirty. <laughs> Later, Vanessa Feltz will be joining me on the settee, and I'll be bouncing through the fucking ceiling. <laughs> okay, at the end of that round, the points go to Frankie, Hugh, and Jack. And that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne and Russell Howard. <laughs> Commiserations to Frankie Boy, Hugh Dennis and Jack Whitehall. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night. Catch Radio 2's star-studded concert from the Blackpool Illuminations. Press the red button now. Or there's brand spanking new comedy on BBC Three with the office slackers we know as the Lunch Monkeys.